but because of activists and activism and the passage of important laws and the creation of, of um, an advancement of regulatory agencies, we all got together and have been improving the water quality of the Delaware River over many, many years. And so we can now go on the river safely and not fear that we're going to get sick and die, right, by just hanging out on the water. But of course, there's a lot more work to be done. River is still challenged by ongoing pollution every day, and there are new threats that we constantly have to be vigilant um, in protecting the river from. New threats to water quality that threaten the fish, and of course, also threaten the people. short nose sturgeon and the Atlantic sturgeon are at risk of going extinct in our lifetimes at some point in the foreseeable future. So, so it's a pretty serious threat. <clears throat> there really is motivation to try to turn this tide. But let me talk about the Atlantic sturgeon who are, are really iconic and monumental and are one of the signature, signature species of the Delaware River. So when I talk about big fish, now I've got to extend my, uh, my uh, meter stick here because when we talk about Atlantic sturgeon, we're talking about really big fish. Right? Not the biggest sturgeon anywhere on the planet, um, but one of the larger species of sturgeon. So a typical spawning adult male is about seven feet long, right? Uh, a pretty big fish. An adult female is nine feet long, right? So almost the entire length of this is a somewhat typical female. And if you get a really extraordinary specimen, now I've got to extend this even longer, um, and this was seen even just last year, despite the fact that we have hammered the sturgeon populations, both Atlantic and short nose, and they're on the endangered species list, there still is hope and there still are some massive fish. Uh, last year in the Hudson River, some surveyors from Delaware State University and the University of Delaware saw a 14 foot long Atlantic sturgeon still living, still coming back to breed in our rivers. Um, it wasn't in the Delaware, it was up in the Hudson, but three and a half milligrams per liter of oxygen is not enough to protect these Atlantic sturgeon. Both Atlantic sturgeon and short nose sturgeon, perhaps because they're such a, uh, an evolutionarily ancient fish, um, have a very poor ability to deal with low dissolved oxygen. They need numbers more like five or six milligrams per liter to be able to um, spawn for their eggs to survive and for their larvae to survive. And so what we've seen even over the last 10 years, beginning in 2009, the state of Delaware fisheries biologists started going out and trying to collect young of year sturgeon, sturgeon that were hatched here in the Delaware River, and they started to find them. And in particular, over the last 10 years, every time we get a really strong dissolved oxygen summer, every time where you know the, the planets align and oxygen stays strong throughout the summer, 2009, 2014 are the two best years, we get an extraordinary surge in the spawning population of Atlantic sturgeon. And then we take a couple of steps back. We get a bad summer. The oxygen doesn't look so good. It's actually hard to find Atlantic sturgeon. And so part of the motivation for everyone uh, that's in this game of looking at the restoration of the Delaware estuary, people are focused on dissolved oxygen again. People are focused on the next round of upgrades, including in nutrient removal. It's partly because there are species like, like Atlantic sturgeon that are endangered and that will directly benefit. If we could improve dissolved oxygen for this coming summer, um, we would see a direct benefit in those populations uh, of Atlantic sturgeon. So, so it's, it's an amazing creature.
Today, the Shad have returned to the Delaware River. The Shad have returned to the Schuylkill River, which was actually in worse shape than the Delaware back in 72. Uh, even in my time in Philadelphia, I've been here in Philadelphia for 40 years now, uh, there is visible and olfactory evidence that the river's a lot cleaner. Now, I'm not a fisherman, but I am a boater. Uh, and certainly, the river has gotten so much clearer that a new problem has been discovered. Suddenly, the sunshine is being able to penetrate down into the depths of the river again. And, but guess what, our 1972 upgrades does not, do not remove a lot of the nitrogen and phosphorus that are in our waste discharges to the river. So if we don't remove the phosphorus and nitrogen and we have sunlight penetrating down into the, as far, as deep as the, ocean, the river bottom, what, what happens in the, in the stream that wasn't possible when it was, when it was muddy or, or filled with solids. Photosynthesis specifically by algae.